And in studio, we've got a, a house full here today. With the uh, We do this interview uh, each year. And uh, it's uh, great uh, stuff that these folks are doing out of Jefferson County. And Jason Morris, who's in charge of the ROTC program there, joins us now. Sarge, good morning to you. How are you feeling, man? Feeling pretty good. Greetings, and thanks for having us come out today. Absolutely. It's an annual tradition right around this time each year. It certainly is. Yeah, I appreciate you still getting in touch with me. Now, you've got a couple of cadets to your right. Could you introduce those? Absolutely. So we have Cadet Colonel Britt Shodell. He's our group commander with Air Force Junior ROTC. And we have our Cadet Chief Master Sergeant Meredith Hunt. Meredith, Britt, good morning to you both. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. So, Britt, tell us about yourself first. Uh, well, like uh, Sergeant Morris said, I'm the group commander at Jefferson High School uh, with the Junior ROTC program. So I'm the top-ranking cadet, and I'm the leader in most of the activities that we put on, like the shoe and coat fund. Let's see, I'm mm-hmm. also in band and jazz band at the high school. I play trombone. Did you bring your trombone with you today? No, not today. I didn't think it'd be able to fit. It is a, a rather sizable uh, horn. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Meredith, good morning. Good morning. Um, like Sergeant Morris said, I am our command chief at Jefferson High School Junior ROTC. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm i more of a sports person. I don't do band or anything like that, so I play lacrosse. I'm a team captain for my lacrosse team. Um, yeah. So you carry a stick and whack people with it. Yes. Yeah. Just that's... got whacked the other week oh, by where, my friend. Where'd you get hit? Uh, the leg. She got a little mad at me. Yeah. Well, that'll happen. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you score a lot of goals or do you defend them more so? Um, I'm center, so I do everything. I get to do both. You run so. up and down. Yep. All right, very good. How's your team doing this year? Uh, good. So we don't really start until spring, but mm-hmm. we've that's started true. practices. So very good. It's nice. Well, thanks to, to you both for coming in here. Right. Thank you. Let's talk about the uh, the drive that you're doing and what you need folks to do to help. So the Shoe and Coat Fund, it was started back in the early 80s by uh, the Rotary Club. And when our unit was founded in 2002, we were looking for a community service project that we could do. And we thought the Shoe and Coat Fund was a great opportunity. So each November, we go out and raise money for uh, the less fortunate students in our community. And we provide them with winter clothes, shoes, anything that they may need to help stay warm during the colder months. Matt Harvey, these are your folks here in Jefferson County. I know. I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you for what you're doing for the community. Um, What can we do to help with that? Your shoe and coat fund. We accept monetary donations. You'll be seeing cadets uh, going door to door throughout the month. They'll be dressed in their blue uniforms like we are here today, and we accept cash and check. Any money goes a long way to help us. No interest in used clothing? You're looking for for funds only? Correct. Yep. Okay. Once the funds are received, then what's the next process? Do you go out and buy the shoes and coats, or do you give it to an organization? So we give a check. We present a check at a board meeting to, like, the staff at the board whatever and then they take that money and go and buy that stuff for them after we collect it everything is just sent to the board we don't keep any of it and then they deal with it after that normally what do you generally raise last year we raised about thirty eight thousand dollars wow Whoa. that's pretty impressive is that the most you've ever raised so I must answer this question. So a few years back, pre-COVID, each year the price or the amount of money that they would generate would go up. One year we were struggling, so myself and the two other instructors in our divine wisdom said, well, we'll make a little friendly wager with you all, and if you guys can raise $50,000, we'll bleach our hair blonde. I remember <laughs> so you can figure out how that story turned out. <laughs> yeah. It looked like Billy Idol for a couple months. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, then you were in The Wedding Singer right after that. <laughs> Matt, tell me you've seen that movie, The Wedding Singer. Yes. Just, all right. Well, at least we've we got one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, that's one. So how about on the on the other side of this? How do people qualify for the coats or get the coats or what? What? How does that process work? So I'll help with this question. So it is in turn it's given to the board office, and what they'll do if the, the board, which board? The, uh, Jefferson County. 
Okay. Uh, Board of Education. So what they'll actually do, they'll have contact from the area guidance counselors, and if they have children, it could be kindergarten through seniors, actually. And if they need help, if they receive word, they'll actually take them out shopping, and that's how they do it. So they have quite a good program with that. I, I don't think people understand that how big of a need, even in Jefferson and Berkeley counties, that there is for this. Can you, do you have any idea of like how many families that you serve with your with your monetary donations? I do not know how many families uh, that it serves, but it's a wide-reaching program. Uh, you know, it could be families who are just poor, you know, people in poverty, and then if there's a fire or something, you lose your house, lose all your clothes. It helps in many different situations. When do you open to have the uh, clothing and, and stuff distributed? So that really depends upon the board office, how they do that. Um, so they'll typically take them out as required, but the program runs from from one November to one December, and then from that point we turn the funds in and they'll use it as as they, they need to with discretion. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about your involvement in ROTC, and Britt, let's start with you first, as to your decision to get involved in ROTC and when that happened for you. Well, both my parents were in the Army, and... Uh, so you had to go Air Force. I get it. <laughs> Little thumb in the eye. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, going back to middle school. You know, I thought it. They, uh, the ROTC visited my middle school, and I thought it was a very interesting program. I've been interested in military service, so I thought, you know, this is a great way to see what it is like a little bit. You know, dip my toe in the water. Will you pursue it? Do you think as a career? Yeah, I think after I'm going to go to college first, and then we'll see. Uh, see where it goes from there have you decided on a college i have been accepted into the university of alabama so roll tide oh, uh, one ooh. of my neighbor's kids went there oh really yeah yeah i've always been an alabama fan so that'd be pretty cool i think to go down there they've had a good run meredith how about you um so i originally got into rotc because my brother was in the Navy, and I was always like, okay, how can I one-up you next? Like, what, what's the next step? I want to be better. And a bunch of my uncles are in different branches, so I was like, okay, like, why not? My mom was like, like, go ahead, try it. After my freshman year, I hated it. I was like, there's no way I'm coming back. And then, like, everybody talked me, talks more about it to me, and I was like, okay, like, maybe this could be interesting. And then I just ended up, like, falling in love with it. Like, it's such a great program. And I don't know. I, I definitely would have made the wrong decision if I had just decided to go. I mean, look where I am now. So, <laughs> What, what if, parts did you not like about it? Well, I, I started during COVID. So we oh, were online, oof. and there was, like, I was like, no way I can do this. No way. Like, what am I supposed to be doing? I didn't. I was very confused about Shun Cope Fund, actually. So I, like, at first I was like, oh, like, what's this? But then as we got into it and I learned more about stuff like this and, like, heard about stuff like this, I was like, okay, like, that's cool. I want to actually be a part of it. John, you're about to ask. Yeah. <clears throat> Talk about the ROTC program in general. If you decide to go active duty after school or whether it's high school or college, whichever way, um, do these years in ROTC count toward their – retirement years with, within the military itself do you know they do not but it provides a, a good skill bridge for them all the basics uh, from wearing the uniform and drill and and just the general military knowledge helps them get a leg up if they do proceed to uh if they want to follow that college level rotc and uh, are military tactics and such part of the training program at the high school level no not uh not in junior rotc we're learning about the history of the Air Force, the history of aviation, uh, a bunch of things like that, leadership, money. Well, that's uh, why I chose Air Force. It's got a very small history. It's a limited <laughs> history, as opposed to the Navy or the Army. Sorry, my dad was career Navy, so. <laughs> Are you being snitty? A little bit. To our guests? No, not, no. Well, yeah. M Matt, arrest, arrest him. I don't have arrest powers. <laughs> well, well, you I do, do have I do, arrest, I do arrest powers. You have a badge, don't you? Yeah, I do, yeah. and I have, but it's very limited to like the courtroom, my okay. arrest powers. Now that that's clarified. Uh, so back to our, our guest here again, and uh, I want to ask you what your uh, a, a biggest accomplishment has been, Meredith, since you've been in ROTC, whether it's personal or professional in regards to your service. I think ending up in core management because, I mean, like I said, I was like really confused being online my freshman year. And what does core management mean? Um, it's our top seven in the core. So 
like at the during your junior year you apply to get into core management and basically everything you've done in ROTC gets like looked at put on this spreadsheet and they're like okay like who who is our top seven in the core and then I don't know it feels very nerve-wracking actually to be a part of that and to like be like oh my gosh am I gonna get in am I not gonna get in did I do enough stuff like it's so how big is the pool of candidates to get in um our junior class was kind of small because it's only juniors that can apply and i think our junior class was kind of small but other years might have been a bit bigger Mm -hmm. but um our junior class was very small and i think everybody kind of figured like oh it's kind of down to like these 15 people like i wonder who's gonna like get out of them but i'm not sure exactly how many kids is in our class for our year you want to take that, Jason? Absolutely. And it depends. They, they have to want to do it. That's, that's the biggest part right there. And then we'll start going through the process and, and look at how much involvement they've had in the Cadet Corps. Community service hours is a big thing. These guys need to be out in the community doing all the different events that we do. That's a big part of it. So, and that's why COVID was so confusing because that, that was one year we couldn't really get out and do a lot of the things that we do. So that was a big part of that but they they made it the top seven to get in it's a a pretty big feat for them so is the total population of rotc students called the core is that that's correct okay so is the core school specific your jefferson high school right correct so does does um musselman do all the different high schools have their own core or is it overarching so for for our county jefferson high school ROTC in our unit, we serve Jefferson County. Now, Martinsburg, they actually have feeder schools like Musselman, Spring Mills that come in. We actually have one feeder school where we're at Washington High School that comes in. And we currently have about 205 cadets in the program. Is that a fairly representative number of what it is annually? It is. We've been as high as 250 uh, my first year coming in, about 145. Any idea what number of these folks go on to uh, pursue something in the military? That's always a question that we get. I, if I had to throw a number out there, I might say maybe 12, 15% of the kids that participate in ROTC might move on to military service. Can you pretty much pick those kids out every, uh, every class? Or sometimes. Some so, sometimes they'll throw you a curveball. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time, they, and we're not really a recruiting program, but we also realize that a lot of these young guys and gals that come in, they, they have an interest in the military in general. It's a good way to find out if that's what they want to do. But we're happy if they... It while in if they serve us and then they decide to move on go to college go to the workforce it, it's all good effect because they get a lot of good experience with us brett t- tell me about coming in uh, as, as a freshman i think you said you went in correct yeah. and then coming up through the ranks and, and through the years uh, different uh, responsibilities that you assume so uh let's see as i went to after my freshman year, we had a thing called C. Coles, you know, Cougar Cadet Officer Leadership School. Usually it's M. Coles, which takes place in Concord, West Virginia, but because of COVID, we had to have it at the high school. And that was a great learning experience for me. Uh, there was a week long, kind of like a camp at the school. We had a, there were many different uh, leadership activities. And I got to work with people from grades above me and I got to learn about leadership. So then coming in as a sophomore, I was made a flight commander. And I had a, more responsibilities in the school and in the program. Uh, I would be in charge of the class if the instructor was not in the room. I was grading people on uniform inspections every week. And uh, I did the same thing last year. I was a flight commander again. And then I got called into core management. I applied and made it into the top seven. And last spring, I was just learning all about the different positions and responsibilities we have. Tell me about your school day is like in regards to how being an ROTC affects it. So I have a full class schedule. So I've got, let's see, four classes, then band and jazz band. But our last class of the day is ROTC. And during that class period, we spend time planning all the different activities and events that our program does, uh, putting everything into the computer system, which is slow and finicky because it's, you know, very outdated. Uh, and just planning everything that the core has to do. And sometimes I get to miss class, like today, you know, I'm 
here talking on the radio to talk about how great the program is instead mm-hmm. of let's see doing calculus right now so yeah we've been all week long we've been avoiding calculus <laughs> yeah. on this program yeah. well, this is the only day we haven't done calculus yeah <laughs> so the, good, good choice today <laughs> Uh, so, is there uh, are there specific times when you're doing drill where you're you're marching or you're you're learning more of uh, ROTC stuff as regards to potential reserve officer training futures? Yeah, so that's more uh, the core management is special when we're doing all the planning stuff. But the rest of the classes, there's they go out and do drill probably once or twice a week in the warmer weather, uh, and then when it gets colder, that's when they learn about leadership and uh, co- uh, money sense and all the different things like that and the education part. Is How the, often do you wear a uniform in school? Once a week. And yeah. is it always the class A when you're in uniform? Uh, the beginning part of the year, it's the short sleeve open collar, you know, the short sleeve shirt. Uh, then after Thanksgiving break, we switch over to the long sleeve tie or tab. And then after spring break, we go back to the short sleeve shirts. All right, who keeps your stuff clean and presses it? I have to iron my shirts and everything. Uh, have to get it dry cleaned every once in a while, you know, make sure it doesn't get too out of control. And Meredith, is there a, like a sort of a boot camp of some sort that uh, newbies go through at first to kind of get used to what's going on? So over the summer for our incoming, we call them 100s, it's basically freshmen or anybody coming into their first year of ROTC. We have freshman orientation or like, I don't know, uh, we just call it BCO, Basic Cadet Orientation. Mm -hmm. And they come in and they come in for four days out of a week and get to learn all about our program, get ahead of the other cadets, because the cadets that don't do this over the summer come into the year, end up knowing less than the cadets that did come in over the summer. And they also get a rank, like they get to have their first rank for coming Mm -hmm. um, in over the summer. And so they learn drill, they get to do like leadership exercises, like we have this thing called Project X, they basically get to use teamwork and like kind of figure that out together, do stuff like that, and just start off like a little bit ahead of everyone else. Is there ever a time when uh, you're handling live weaponry in in our junior ROTC, learning how to shoot and such? No. They should add that, uh, you know, like the ref West Virginia as the rifle team. You could you could be like a recruit to get a scholarship. They're pretty good, as, as I understand it. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, just to wrap it up, here, we've got about a minute and a half left in regards to the shoe and coat drive. Again, tell our audience how they can help. Yeah, so whenever you see cadets walking around in their uniforms, they usually be going door to door. We accept cash and check donations. Uh, we also try to... Get a little table outside, you know, local tractor supply, co, black dog, coffee, you know, a couple local businesses. Some places might have a bucket to uh, you can donate into, but yep, cash and check, and uh, yeah. And and where can they get the money to you? And anywhere else? Can they neighbors give it to you directly or whatever? Good, Jason. Uh, that's correct. So, and that's a lot of it's done really the old way, out on foot, going door to door. And if they're interested, they could also contact Jefferson High School. Uh, that number would be 304 725 8491. Very good. And you have a target goal. Last year you did 38,000, right? So we can top that? Yep. Our goal for this year is $40,000. Mm-hmm. And what does he have to do? What does he get to 40? I think, oh, at, what does Britt have to do? <laughs> Britt and Meredith, what, dye your hair purple, red, green? Nah, I'm not sure. I guess we'll have to discuss that one. I think that's just My freshman year, I asked them to wear tutus, but that never happened. <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe Jordan, Jason, maybe a tutu, right? I can't see Not, this week. Not this week. <laughs> that would happen there. Hey, uh, appreciate you folks coming in. Have a great day and catch up on your calculus. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for you. having us. We're uh, returning with a final minute next.